to Navigating Change, the education podcast from Tybal Inc. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is Sonny Howard Tybal. You, you keep you keep changing things on me. I, I don't <laughs> like change, Pete. <laughs> You have a whole fear new platform change. we're working on, and you know how much I don't like change. Fear, fear change from Tybal Inc. Is that that's, our new That's, our new, t- that's our new logo. <laughs> fear change. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, we haven't done one of these little uh, these little preview episodes in some time. That's true. Right? It, you, uh, it, this, you are going to be speaking with the uh, Administ- Administrative Management Institute uh, through Cornell Professional Studies at Cornell University on August 7th. This is the, how many times have you been over there for this event? I think I've done it three times. So this is your fourth. If I've done it three times, this is my fourth. Boy, you are. Have you, you've had your coffee. Well, it, it took the second cup to get there. Actually, uh, you know what? It could be my third, but it, it, it's been, uh, I think it's, it's either my third or fourth. Okay. All right. So as an experienced AMI presenter, yes. uh, it has been some time <laughs> since we have talked about what you do uh, when you are doing it. And this is a new presentation this year. So we thought we would jump back in and Absolutely. give you the opportunity to talk just for a few minutes about what you what are going to be are we doing, be doing? And, uh, and let people know why it's so great they should head out there. That's right. What we're bringing this year is a focus on creativity and innovation. This is going to show them uh, the way at a number of institutions we could use the thinking of a for-profit. In this case, it's using the work of Pixar that eventually got purchased by Disney and the thinking and writing of Ed Catmull, who ran Pixar, and the mechanisms that he used to create an ex- an exceptionally improving and an engaging set of animation films. And the mechanisms that he uses translate directly to the kinds of ways we need to start breaking down silos. So for example, one mechanism they talk about in the book is this idea of dailies. And dailies in an animation uh, studio is Bring, coming together and looking at the next iteration of what cr- got created. But dailies at Pixar were opportunities to critique and to show up with incomplete work. And when I go to higher ed leaders and say, how often do you show up with incomplete work as a way to engage others to then improve the product? Most times people will say, you know what? That's the last thing I would do. I, I'm, I'm trying to come as close to perfection as possible. Right. Pixar has summarized, or, or Ed Kemmel summarized, eight of these kinds of mechanisms. One called dailies, one called research trips, power of limits, integrating technology and art, short experiments, learning to see, postmortems, and finally, how we continue to learn. And these became the basis for how they continued to improve on a product that if you go back to the 80s and you look at what animation looks like today, and what they had then, it's a function of how they broke down silos and they work together as a team. So you are looking to take these, uh, and, and far be it from me to criticize the great work of Pixar, but you have fashioned a way to connect these eight uh, innovations, these eight strategies from Pixar into higher ed for breaking down silos. How does that work? Exactly. And what, what's really interesting about this and what I want people to take away is they should go back to their institutions is whether it's reading the book Creativity Inc. or researching and learning about Amazon, we need to start doing a more comprehensive job of identifying uh, either thought leadership or ideas or approaches, get people to come together and explore them together. And what I saw at, in this case, CU Boulder, When they did that through using these creativity ink mechanisms, and we did a retreat with all of the finance administration, then we did all of the student affairs, and then we did the system office for IT, and then the campus office for IT, culminating in a call for proposals. The first time we did this, a month later, 60 proposals were submitted to look for ways to improve on how we can deliver services and programs to students, to other departments. And this became the seeds of breaking down not just silos, but building a different kind of mindset 
around how we approach problem solving. I I, I had a conversation with a uh, a colleague at a top tier institution, and we were talking about some of these concepts after the the first time that that we you and I discussed uh, Pixar and Creativity Inc. and and the inspiration that you gleaned from it. Uh, and I heard this when I made a comment about uh, you know rethinking how we think of ourselves as innovative. Uh, this colleague of mine said, "We're innovative. We are super innovative. We're a research institution," yeah. and it got me thinking. That does not mean. That you, at the administrative level, that you in operations are innovative. Or even just, at the academic or, level. Or at the academic level. Right, right. right. That, th- those are two very different things. And we this, this is guiding, I think certainly guiding me, to rethink areas where innovation comes as an opportunity. You know, that's really helpful to hear you say that. The history around how we solve problems is we look at a series of symptoms and then in isolation, we try and come up with solutions. And you know, in, in one of the ways you know that people recognize the need to step into a bigger conversation is when we put a task force together. A task force is fundamentally a recognition that my department or your department can't alone solve this, but we don't build that kind of thinking into the culture. This is about building a different cultural mindset about what it means to work together. So imagine that the walls of your organization are down. See, these are artificial barriers we have set up to get work done. These silos have a purpose. The purpose is I want to get my work done. Don't get in my way. You want to get your work done. Get it, don't get in my way. But if we're going to innovate, if we're going to come up with new ways of doing things, we have to lower those walls and say, let's come together, figure out where there's a gap, where there's an opportunity, And then together explore what would it look like to understand that? Oh, you know what? Let's do a short experiment or let's do a research trip. Let's get out there and meet with folks to see what they're saying, not what we think we're saying. So fundamentally, this is three layers. One layer is investing ourselves in learning about another way of thinking about uh, getting work done. Secondly, learning how to package something that meets the needs of a particular customer, students, faculty, alums, whatever the story is. And third, how do we pitch this in a way that inspires those that have to give us funding or those who have to sign off? How do we do this? So, so the nature of the AMI conversation is going to be touching on those three things. This is coming up, as we said, August 7th. Uh, is there is there anything we want to point to for people to get up to speed uh, uh, to prepare them for That's your conversation? I, I wrote a uh, an article for Nakubo's HR Horizons magazine, and we'll put that in the show notes where it takes apart the creation of this and what the impact of looking at these mechanisms and also lists out the mechanism because if people can come into this having already began thinking about what how this translates we can take the conversation to another level so that's a great idea we'll and and in addition to putting this on our website we'll make this available obviously for the AMN I institute to share with people that might be at the program or thinking about coming to the program. It's a fascinating new way of thinking about innovation and where we can glean inspiration from outside higher ed. And more often than not, we're seeing fantastic work that that directly applies in ways that maybe we haven't thought before. So this is uh, this is going to be a great show. Uh, any final notes for folks as we wrap up here? I think Cornell is an incredible institution that provides this kind of institute. It's been around a long time, and it's another example of what it means to allow ourselves to step back and reflect about how we're going to do the work too often and more now than ever, Pete. We are so buried in the very next thing we have to get done that people have to give themselves more and more permission to say, let me take a time out so I can think long term. I was just saying today to a group, I, this is, sounds crazy, but I <laughs> schedule in my calendar time to think. Not crazy at all. Right? Not crazy at all. If I don't put in my calendar between three and four o'clock on a on Thursday, I'm going to just sit and think. It doesn't happen. That's, That's right. sad but true. Yep. 
Things right? move too fast. Yeah. You know, going to AMI and and participating in something like this is a way to give yourself permission to step back so that you can rejuvenate yourself in preparation for the next year. I'm going to call this the Ferris Bueller model of, uh, of <laughs> How is leadership. How Ferris Bueller? Right? Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, that's it. You could miss it. Ooh. Hmm? Yeah, maybe How, that's the quote. With, with my permission, you may use the Ferris Bueller model of, uh, of innovation in any one of your talks. I You're will, welcome. I will take that under advisement. <laughs> I know what that means. I got to get out of here. Hey, thank you, Howard. As always, it's a treat to uh, podcast with you, my friend. Same here. Thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. We certainly appreciate your time and attention. On behalf of Howard Teibel, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week right here on Navigating Change, the podcast from Teibel Education.